Hi, my name is Leko. Uh, I'm a senior developer in Andela. Uh, you're welcome to Andela. Coding is a, is a way of writing in a language that computers can understand. Um, in more broader terms, is what software developers write or do uh, to make computers do what we want them to do. Think about the fact um, we, today we have mobile applications, we have web applications. So coding is what software developers do, you know, write the web application, write the mobile a uh, mobile application that solves a problem or does something. For me, anyone is qualified, literally anyone is qualified to be a coder. Um, it's just about uh, the willingness to learn, the willingness to put in the effort, just like anything. Uh, I mean, if you're going to go into uh, the medical field or engineering, you, know, you still have to put in the effort. So, um, and the thing about coding or software development is it's, the barrier is not, the barrier to entry is quite low, but you still have to put in the effort to get up to par, you know, um, so today. So you're saying that, that, that I don't require maybe a mathematics uh, degree or something to be You don't, coder. you don't. Uh, okay, I'll use a personal experience. On a personal level, mm. um, I picked up coding or programming uh, as a teenager. And then um, I went on to study computer science and then did my master's in software engineering. But I have so many colleagues now today that didn't go that path, right? So um, anyone, I have colleagues that studied economics, I have some colleagues that studied um, art and they are software developers today. So, um, and even some people that don't even have like formal university education too mm. can also be software developers. So, the barrier to entry is um, it's broken down. Exactly, it's broken down. You don't need like a school qualification for you to start a career in software development. Oh. How early should someone start learning how to code? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I know about countries where they say um, you have to start maybe from young, that it's, it will help you build and all that. Yeah. Is that the case? Um, first of all, as early as possible. Um, because I know in Finland, for instance, uh, Finland, they introduced programming and software development to their national curriculum so that um, students or pupils from preschool to nursery, they start teaching them programming from that level. But um, we have to recognize the fact that opportunity is not something that is available to everyone. Uh, it's not equal um, across the world. So uh, we recognize the fact that in Africa and Nigeria, not a lot of people will have that privileged access you know, to computers, to learn um, computers at a very early age. But um, I would say learning as early as possible. Um, but it doesn't matter the age, um, teenager, um, younger than the teenager, old. I mean, I've so been as, in, yeah. As, as young as five years can start learning how yes, to code? Yes, yes, definitely. No, okay. yeah. Definitely, I mean, there's some basics, in fact, um, there are some materials for um, young kids um, that they can start picking up things because those are their formative years and you know uh, they can pick up from there and then grow to be developers. But for Zandela I have that kind of program that brings in young guys and uh, I'm, I'm from when they are little and groom them too. Yeah, so um, Andela we have um, some initiatives um, that we do. Um, so we have an initiative called uh, Andela Teen Code, uh, so where they um, we go out there, you know, go to secondary schools uh, to, you know, teach programming to, you know, young, uh, to the younger generation so that as they grow into adulthood, they already have an idea of um, how coding works. And for me, um, one of the things I also believe is that software development is something that you can do. It's one of those things you can do alongside anything. I mean, I've seen doctors that do programming as well. I've seen engineers, you know, that do programming. So it's something you can do alongside almost anything. So, yeah. Which country actually has the largest um, social developers in Africa? Um, I like to think it's Nigeria. How? Uh, why? Um, because we have a really big um, community here um, of developers. You know, looking at like for instance in Mandela alone, we have like over 700 software developers right in 
um, and even in Ambella, Lagos, Nigeria, um, we have so many developers, you know, in the building, and we are still growing. So, and that's just Ambella. We have, you know, some other communities as well. Um, you look at the um, software development community building up in CC or in um, some other places as well. Yaba, you know, there's this term of Yaba coin. But um, I like to think it's Nigeria, but um, some other places in Africa are also growing as well. I know of uh, Nairobi, uh, Kampala, uh, Rwanda. Um, I know of some communities, of course, in Ghana as well. Yeah. Ghana is our neighbor here. So, um, so those are you know places that is really growing and things are springing up. Okay, right. so um, finally, yeah. uh, um, what's, what's the vision for Andela, uh, I mean, in, in software development? Okay, so our vision is um, you know, to build developers, um, you know, to empower developers, you know, to um, build a community where we can, you know, power to these teams, you know, across the world. And we're already doing that. So um, one of the things we are looking to do is to, you know, build as large a community across Africa, not just Nigeria, you know, um, to have as many developers, you know, doing things from here. You know, without having to, because that's one of the benefits of software development. You can do software development from anywhere, right? So, which is one of the advantages that we've uh, we've leveraged, you know, to build software to reach out to people um, across the world from here in Nigeria. So, we have people that work in teams in US, in UK, you know, in different parts of the world. So. Okay.